Um, so eventually they get uh, restored, but then Absalom does the, well, you're not paying attention to me thing, so I'm just going to go set something on fire. Anybody done that specifically? <laughs> so like, just once, and it was a cat, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's, uh, they're like, who bears? Uh, right, so, uh, okay, Absalom does the classic, like, tween thing of like, well, you're not paying attention to me, I'm just going to like, go rebel somehow. I'm going to dress this way, I'm going to act this way, I'm going to say these things just to get a rise out of you, mom and dad. I know that you don't like when I back talk to you, so I'm going to do that. I know that you don't like when I do this, so I'm going to do that. I know you don't want me to post this, so I'm going to post that. I know that you want me to tweet this or text somebody these pictures. I'm going to do it because, you know what? It's my life. You don't care anyways. That's what Absalom did. I'm back, but David doesn't even care about me. He hadn't even noticed that I'm here. He's not paying attention to me. You know what I'm going to do? Let's go light something on fire. Right? And so, uh, I'm on fire! Uh, so, he lights. So he sets something on fire. Again, child, parent advice, students, don't do this. You want your parents' attention? Then you call them to godliness. You don't rebel. You don't run away. You don't sprint away. You don't set things on fire or do any other type of thing to get a reaction out of your parents. You are not helping them follow God when you step out of boundaries that you know they have set up for you. You are not helping them. Instead, you want your parents to notice you? You feel like you're not getting enough of their time? You do the right thing. Your parents not giving you enough time? You go to your mom and dad and say, I'd like to schedule an appointment with you. And they'll go, huh? And you say, I just... I haven't had enough of your time, so I just thought I'd schedule an appointment so maybe we could sit down and just talk a little bit. You want to get your parents' attention? You do that. You want to get your parents' attention? Then you say, here's the deal. I'm trying to read my Bible every day, but you're not helping me. And so we're reading our Bible every day. Where do you want to start? Look at James. We'll read five verses a day. Mom and Dad, I want you to read it as well. Call them to godliness. Push them to godliness. You want their attention. Don't sprint the other way like Absalom did, which hurts families, hurts people. Sprint towards godliness. The next thing that we see Absalom do is he revolts. He eventually he decides, you know what? My dad doesn't know what he's doing. I'm going to talk bad about him. I'm going to run him down. Honesty in here. If there's a parent in the back, just close your eyes. Honesty in here. How many of you have ever talked bad about your parents to a friend? Be honest. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on me. Our parents are people saved by Jesus. They aren't perfect. They don't have it figured out. They're doing their best. And let's face it, we can make it difficult at times. Again, honestly, how many of you have ever made it difficult on your parents? Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Cut some slack here. But don't do what Absalom does and go, go out and start talking bad about them. Run them down and revolt against them. Think you can do it your own way. Use cutting words like when I get out of this house, when I don't have to listen to your rules when I turn 18. Fight against that. Alright? Fight against that in your heart. Now that's, I, I say all that thing, that very last one, all of this, let me tell you where this comes from. It comes from a place called self-centeredness. Being self-centered. And that's what today's about. Today's the last day of peace, love, and hipsters. Hipsters, we've talked about, are countercultural. Culture does one thing, right? Hipsters do another. That's, that's what their whole life is about. That's what their whole life is about as a hipster. Being countercultural. Our culture has told you all of you, to be worried about yourself first. Take care of self first. Worry about how you look. If people know your name, your pride, your popularity, your talents, your gifts, it's about you. That's what culture says. All the traits we've talked about, mercy, forgiveness, confession, love, peace, those are things that are different than the world. It makes us specifically Christian. Being Christ-centered makes us specifically Christian. Because when you're Christ-centered, you are other-centered. You are interested in the benefit of everybody else before yourself. 
Absalom was completely, completely self-centered. Where did he learn that from? David's self-centered decisions with Bathsheba. Mom and dad aren't perfect. We aren't perfect. Bottom line is this. Philippians 2 has told us to put on the mind of Christ. I'm going to read this to you. If you ever struggle with pride, you need to memorize Philippians 2. I'm going to start in verse 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Do you hear that? Count others. Not some others, not specific friends, not people you think are cooler than you. Others. Everybody. Count everybody as more significant than yourself. Verse 4, let each of you look not only to your own interest, but also the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, took on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, being found in human form, humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. Jesus Christ was the man of humility. He could have been like, check it out, I'm the Son of God, let's see you do some cool stuff. Hey, well, let's go. And instead, he was worried about others. Guys, a self-centered attitude like Absalom had, like David had when he made decisions about himself, when you're in your home and everything about being in your house is about self, Self-centered attitudes hurt yourself, and they hurt others. Remember the outcome of this little family feud, where David made some self-centered decisions, and then in turn, his son made some self-centered decisions? Anybody remember how many people paid the price for that? 20,000. 20,000 people's life lost because of self-centeredness. If you are a follower of Jesus, there is no room for self-centeredness in your life. Not at school. Not in your home. The death of self should be what you're about. There's a guy named Dennis Jernigan who lives in Muskogee. An uh, old friend of mine. I went to college with uh, his daughter and nephews and uh, niece and those kind of things. Uh, he has a tombstone in front of his house. Tombstone reads Journey. December 1991. I believe it's December. And it says, Here lies the flesh of Dennis Journey. For his sin has died, and he is no more. At the top of the hill was the servant of God. Dennis is still alive today. But the old him, the self-centered him, that's all about him and his wants and his desires and the things that it's focused on him, that Dennis is dead. The Dennis that sins and rubbing people's face, that Dennis is dead. The old Dennis, gone in the grave. The Dennis that lives in the house with his family, servant of God. Servant of all. Because when you are Christ-centered, you automatically become other-centered, according to Philippians 2. So today, my challenge, the call, is that you would each put away self. Quit serving self. Do not be like David was in his one mistake or Absalom was in his entire life. And by the way, I will say this. Uh, this is a leadership. This is leadership 101. So if you're a leader in any capacity you ever think you could be, um, or if you ever think you will have a family, Whatever you do in moderation, the next generation will do in excess. All right? So if you as a leader, for me, let's say you all heard me walking around cussing because I said, ah, oh, you know, it's not too big a deal. I am just every now and then. You all would leave and do in excess, and your kids would do in excess. But as a leader does, the next generation, what I do in moderation, the next generation does in excess. Prove it over history. So if you want to protect you and others from being hurt, do not serve self anymore. Don't be concerned about self and people knowing your name and your popularity and your fame. Don't even be concerned about your story, if you want to be honest. Scripture says that we are to be all about God's story and being a part of that. And that's the only thing that will last. So my encouragement, my challenge, the thought for today from Absalom, from Philip, 
from Philippians 2. Put away self. Do not be self-centered any longer. It hurts you. It hurts others. Instead, put on Christ. Be Christ-centered. Be all about others. Be different than the rest of the world. Be equivalent of a moral, ethical, or Christian history. People, are, people just view you as so odd because of the way you live your life. The band's going to come up so we can respond and worship for a little bit. We're going to pray. And um, once, we're, once we're done praying, I'm going to challenge you with this.